I've been trying to do more commentaries on articles as of late, as some of you might have noticed. Not just because they're generally easier to cover as opposed to videos, but also because the written word is a treasure trove of commentary material on the condition you know where to look. Tonight's commentary is on an article called Is Therapy Speak Making Us Selfish? by Rebecca Fishman. Bedridge's Law of Headlines states, quote, any headline which ends in a question mark can be answered by the word no. The reason why journalists use that style of headline is that they know the story is probably bullshit and don't actually have the sources and facts to back it up, but still want to run it. And let me just say right now, this article is a very good example of that. Let's dive in. The article begins by talking about a woman named Anna, who lost her friendship with somebody else for reasons that weren't really adequately explained to her. Last summer, Anna, 24, was dumped by a longtime friend over text while making plans to meet up. The friend pivoted and told Anna she wanted to end their five-year friendship. When Anna asked if it was something she did, her friend told her she wasn't comfortable answering and that there was no more room for discussion. Despite saying that, it turns out Anna's friend did answer and she said, I'm in a place where I'm trying to honor my needs and act in alignment with what feels right within the scope of my life. And I'm afraid our friendship doesn't seem to fit in that framework, the friend wrote. I can no longer hold the emotional space you wanted me to and think the support you need is beyond the scope of what I can offer. Anne was hurt and frustrated. It felt like she was ending the friendship with an HR memo, she said. You see, to me it sounds more like she's just trying to avoid hurting your feelings and is using softer language as a result. How dare she? Like, I would have hoped that you'd respect me enough to give me something more straightforward, or at the very least, more kind. I'm sorry, but what the fuck wasn't kind about what this person said to you? If anything, it seems like, as I just said, she went out of her way to be respectful towards you, while essentially saying you require more effort to maintain a friendship with than it's actually worth. Mind you, I understand that I do not have any context regarding this friendship outside of what's printed in this article, and that in of itself, I should note, actually is somewhat hypocritical on the article's part. You see, one of the things talked about is how it is important to remember in regards to boundary setting that there are other people in the relationship besides yourself. It's important to be able to set boundaries and advocate for yourself. Occasionally, though, the emphasis on protecting one's individual needs can overlook the fact that someone else is on the other side of that boundary setting. In 2019, for instance, a relationship coach's Twitter thread offering a template for telling friends in need of support that you're at capacity at the moment drew criticism for equating friendship to emotional labor. I mean, there is truth to that. It takes active effort to be a good friend, and that occasionally can be overwhelming, especially if you're either a social person or hang around people who require more effort to maintain a friendship with than normal. Checking the thread in question shows that this woman at the very least claims to be the kind of person who her friends often go to for emotional support. To speak personally, I've known people who have been like that, and they have told me how tiring it is to constantly be the person people look to when they have a problem. In general, I've also seen people who have abilities related to fixing issues talk about the fact that many in their friend circle just go to them as a first solution as opposed to actually trying to deal with the problem. One example that comes to mind is Lyo Convoy who wrote a Twitter thread back in October 2022 talking about exactly this and how exhausting it is feeling like he has to juggle everybody else's problems on top of his own life because so many people look to him as little more than a magic fix-all problems button. Earlier this year, a clinical psychologist TikTok video outlining how to break up with a friend went viral after viewers pointed out that it sounded like a missive from HR. What the fuck did HR do to the people at Bustle? This is the second time they've been mentioned negatively in this article. 
Critics have noted that personal relationships require a touch more compassion than some of these therapeutic blueprints offer. And when you're on the other side of someone's perhaps overzealous self-care, the experience can range from annoying to frustrating to downright hurtful. Now if you haven't noticed the hypocrisy yet, let me put it like this. The article says it's important to remember there's a person on the other side of that boundary setting, and they are very much correct to point that out. However, in the same regard, there's a person setting those boundaries. The people setting the boundaries are never talked about, nor do they even make an attempt to understand why said boundaries were put up in the first place. The reason might as well just be bitches be crazy for all they're concerned. And don't get me wrong, some of these people do at the very least appear to be irrational. The woman who told her friend that she had been made to feel unsafe after a birthday party with apparently no further explanation comes to mind. But again, without hearing the other side of the story, I honestly don't know if what the other person said was reasonable or not. Honestly, the more I read the article, the more I was just reminded of this section in one of H. Bomber Guy's videos when he talks about the movie The Room. The Room, precisely with its unrealistic, biased inaccuracy, accurately depicts why breakups actually happen. People don't fully understand how the other person feels and begin to think of them as malicious figures because that's the only way we can make sense of people when we don't fully understand them. I've talked to plenty of guys about breakups and very often you get the same old story just like this one where their partner turned out to be a crazy bitch who just wanted to hurt them. But if you're ever lucky enough to hear the other side of a story like that, they're often just frustrated with people who can so easily view them like that if they have a few arguments. Wiseau tried to make a film about his breakup, but it turned out to be a film about his inability to understand why it happened. Now don't get me wrong, nobody goes so far in this article to call their friend malicious. However, it is at the very least notable the similarities between what H. Bomber Guy was talking about in that clip and the attitude this article gives off. And oh my god, I was tricked into essentially reading a bunch of people bitch about their breakups. Good night and good luck.